describe your team as just a bunch of muckers and grinders. It seemed like they were able to continue doing that tonight. That's pretty much what we did. Uh, I thought we were a little bit slow in the first. We, uh, weren't, we weren't careful enough with pucks. We turned them over at the Blues. Uh, but then once the kids started to chip them deep and, uh, and go to work, then the game, the game evened out at least. And I think toward the end, it may be tilted in our favor toward the very end. Max, what have you uh, found so agreeable uh, in terms of scoring in the playoffs? You've really, uh, really come on and produced a lot of big goals here in the, in the postseason. What's, what's working so well right now? Um, I really think the chemistry with my linemates is uh, helping out. I mean, we're all banging bodies. We're all getting pucks to the net. And uh, Shap is being me that's bearing him. Can you describe your second goal? Because everyone was quite impressed. It was like a, it was an amazing play. How, how, what did you think you had an angle there? How did that work out? You know, uh, in practice, we just practiced getting um, pucks on net. And that's what I did. Brought it on the net, caught it on net, and good things happen when you shoot the puck. On your first goal, where, where did the puck uh, hit off? Where did you... I think that hit off my knee. Ah, so. so uh, <laughs> <laughs> you guys, I mean, you had plenty of chances and just couldn't seem to break through. How nice was it? How big was it, I guess, to get that goal right before the period ended? Oh, anyway. <laughs> oh fuck it. I mean, it was, we needed something. Um, Lingo had a big save in uh, the first period. And, uh, if that went through, then something else would have, could have been a different game. But, you know, what? we uh, stood on his head and we got shots. Shots on that, and we bang bodies, and you know, good things happen. Were just kind of in a zone tonight? Uh, yeah, felt good. Uh, my defense played real well in front of me, and they helped me out a lot, so I can't take all the credit. Mike, what are you seeing differently with Max in the playoffs and just you know, asserting himself and, and making plays around the net that he's been making? You know, I, uh, I'll agree with Max that uh, he, his line was kind of fluid through the years. He had guys dinged up. Um, we kept trying different guys on that one side. And Max is the type of player, he wants to have his line established, and he plays with them for a while. But the biggest thing I've seen with Max is exactly what you saw tonight is um, earlier in the year, he wanted to blaze down the side, beat guys, and snipe it shorthand, high, short. And he can do it. But... Now he's putting pucks on net from everywhere, and he's and he's getting goals. He's also really stepped up as a leader. I mean, he has a command in our room right now, and uh, I think that's helped too. Coach, you said this this group of guys coming up through youth. You know, nobody would expect them to do something like this. Is this run surprising you? Well, I didn't coach them in youth. I I, uh, I know they were kind of up and down in youth. Am I wrong saying that? Um, um, so it doesn't surprise me because kids grow up and kids change, they mature, and this group works so hard. And it started last June with lit, the way they lifted and worked out. And, uh, and the way they've all bought in to just playing their role. You know, we have third liners who were maybe played three shifts in the third period, four, who are on the bench just pushing those guys on, you know. And some teams, I've had teams where those guys sit down and get real quiet. So it's just, it's, yeah, we maybe didn't think this run would happen when you looked at these guys as Bantams and Peewees, but knowing them now, no, I'm not surprised now. Mike, you're a game with the Dino so long ago. Is there anything from that that you can take into the success No. <laughs> uh, we're not the same team. We don't even have the same lines. We didn't even have a couple players. They weren't the same team. Um, and it was a really hot, hard fought game. We, he made some incredible saves late. But neither team, both teams were just kind of feeling it then. And I think that was the second week of the season, so no. We're, we're both way different teams. Maybe better to have won that than lost it? Um, 
It was so long ago, I honestly do, don't even think it's valid at this point. Um, it's going to do nothing for us. We have to prepare for the Edina team that played right before us. That's what we have to prepare for. And they look pretty good. They look, they look, these guys will sleep tonight. I don't know if I will. <laughs> Looking back at this game going into it, I mean, the first period, Phil Ballou was kind of zooming around was pretty hard to contain. You did a much better job of containing him after that. Did you do anything different? Uh, the kids yelled at each other in the locker rooms and got on each other and started putting a body on them. You know, obviously on our scouting report, we knew he really liked to handle the puck. We knew he was really shifty, and in the first period, he lived up to that billing. Um, but we also knew we were in big trouble if we let him roam. And so the kids stepped up and started to try to cut him off and, and at least rub him out. I think in the first, we might have been trying for big hits. And you're not, that, you're just going to have a big miss, especially with a guy that slipped you. Mike, what you do in the third uh, when you got the two goal lead? Did you uh, change the way you were playing at all? No. We, uh, we just, I, I think the biggest thing we did is we told our D no chances, stay up, take the rush on, Ch keep chipping pucks deep. But I, we really didn't adjust any. If we were late, we went to what we call a wedge. But that we do that all the time. So do you guys think we did anything different? Battled. Lingo doesn't think we did. So. Nick, coming into this this week, what were you guys' expectations and goals? To uh, battle and to uh, play within us and uh, <clears throat> play as a team. I mean, we're a family and we you know that. And we uh, every game we have, we talk before, before every game and uh, we just think deep down and we, uh, we execute our systems and play our game. That's how we win games. The game went on, again, you, you, you obviously the two of your offense pretty thoroughly, but you guys played like a perfect second, third period. You just came, I mean, it's like you played better and better as the game went on. It, 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 it almost like when it was, no longer seemed scoreless, it was kind of the game was coming to you guys. Yeah, yeah, you I think, right? yeah, I, I saw it that way, and I, I, because I think we started a little slow. I think, you know, Duluth East is a story program. They've been here many times. Blue has probably been here, what, three years? Uh, four. So, and we have Lingo, who was back up, and maybe Tommy. Tommy uh... So we were new. So as a coach, I would never say this, but I was going to be real happy if it was close after our first. Because then I knew our kids would get those, the nerves and the, They'd be over the shock and awe when you go out in that crowd. And and that's what I think. I think you saw more how we have been playing in the second and third. That's how this team has been performing. Coach, uh, maybe you could just start by talking about uh, well, at the end of the second period, how kind of deflating that was for you guys. The end of the second with 1.1 that went in? Yeah. Can't let that happen. Uh, we had a chance. To we could have taken it in the corner and let the clock run out, but kind of panicked with it, threw it around the wall, soft around the wall, and the wrong guy had the puck, and he buried it. Big turning point. But that's been our Achilles all year, getting scored on at the beginning of periods and getting scored on at the end of periods. So. Well, we just talked about, you know, there's a lot of hockey left. Last time I checked, we got to score a goal to, uh, to win. We had, you know, we, we played a really good first period. We had a lot of really good looks. And then when we got the power play, all we did is not bury it. We executed very well. Altman had a couple back door that won one. The other Altman had one in the first period where he drove the net and our defenseman had nothing but net and shot right. We just didn't have a lot of puck luck. It's kind of it's kind of night that we ex thought our team would be like all year. I mean, we kind of got back to, you know, who's going to score. You, you know, 
did an amazing job of juggling Kohler, like half shifting him here. Now the knee was pretty bad. Though. Yeah, he, he's on one leg. He's playing on one leg right now. And he's a big time player for us. As people who've seen us play, he's, he's a. And he played a great game. He was. He might have been our best forward. And half wall, breaking all up. Because he played a really gutty game. I was really proud of him. No, we pressed a little bit and they were playing back a little bit. And we had a hard time getting through their defensive coverage. Uh, and our sticks got a little tight. We weren't executing like we were. There, there was a lot of frustration on the bench. They, they knew they had some really good looks. I mean, we had a lot of looks early. And then they popped that one with 1.1 1 .1 and they changed their style a little bit. Five wasn't playing a 200-foot game. He's playing a 60-foot game. And uh, they just kind of clogged up the middle and clogged up the rink. And they, you know, it was us and them. But again, we got our, we got to find that penalty. When they call it bothered me all night, it still bothers me. Is that embellishment? You kidding me? You kidding me? He was a 10th grader. He doesn't even know what the hell embellishment is. <laughs> He wouldn't, he wouldn't even think of it. Embellishment. And then right after that, uh, Balut takes one down. And that was pretty good embellishment there by the Egan guy. I mean, you know, there was just, that was a big time turning point. I mean, we were really called timeout and everything. 10th grader, 26. If you were to go in the locker room and ask him what embellishment is, he wouldn't even know what it meant. He's the last guy that would embellish. Embellishment. How many times has that been called in the state tournament? I've, I've been in the state tournament 15 times. I've never heard of it. I, I, I had a feeling that maybe, since we're already short, so 40 minutes seconds ago, we didn't want to put him two minutes short, so that way he could get away with following the trip that was obvious. And then pretending that when you get tripped, the gravity doesn't take over. Yeah. You know, so it must have been embellished. It's a pretty good trip. I mean, I knew it was a trip. In fact, I didn't even know they called the embellishment one. I go, who called that? But I would like our chances at two men up yeah. at that point. So, embellishment. It was strange that you didn't get a bounce. I mean, you played really well. You had a lot of chances. You didn't get a bounce to go your way. They all went off. Yeah. No, I, we told, we just told the kids, they played a good game. I mean, you know, could we play better? Could we, did we want to play better? Yeah, but at the end of the day, we are who we are, you know. We got four seniors in there and one of the seniors playing on one leg. So we've been really proud of this group, really proud of this group. And they pushed Egan, I'll tell you what, they knew they were in a hockey game.